so that's uh, what we're doing up front here and we expanded it to include everybody under the roof so Chris and Steve are helping us tonight too <clears throat> so we'll start with two songs by Chris and then Steve's gonna have the oceans Good evening. Welcome to everyone here. I discovered that being part of the Shirk family, I guess, is a little bit more than just the good meals and all the fresh maple syrup I want and stuff. It also includes helping a family night, so I guess I got into that. For the first song, turn to number 76 in Hymns of the Church. Song number 76. No soul to God.
number 506, and we will observe the bird's eye at the end of the chorus. Greetings in Jesus' name. Um, two songs are my favorite. Greetings. Let's turn your vials to 95, please, in your Bible. Psalm 95. O oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of my salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Make a joyful noise unto him with song. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth, the stream of the hills. It is also, the sea is his, and he made it, and his 
and form the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pastures and the sheep of his, of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation and as in, in the day of ten, temptation, temptation in the wilderness when your fathers tempted when your fathers tempted me prove me and saw my work 40 years 40 years long was I grieved with his, with his generation as and this generation and said it is it is a people that do err in in their heart and they have not known their my ways and unto him I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. We see a lot of truth here. We need to not harden our hearts. We need to serve God forever. And not, they, 40 years, they was in the wilderness, they complained. The children of Israel, but then the Lord promised them a, a promised land. And then they still complain. And then I'll read a couple of verses in 96. I was saying unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord. Bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. So if we serve God forever, we'll be rewarded in heaven. That's by our heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for all the people that came. Pray for Theron's boy, Lord. Just heal him. It's not against his will. In thy will. And just give us a good evening. And bless the Lord for giving us a good evening. Sunshine. And just God and direct us in the same prayer. Amen. Okay, thank you, Steve, for that devotions and prayer. Uh, next, we're going to have Dustin and then Cody uh, do Bible readings, and then Kyle's going to have a song history. <clears throat> Good evening. I'm going to read Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in the green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, <clears throat> for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Good evening. I'm going to be reading Psalm 34, verse 1 through 10. <clears throat> I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. 
I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. And taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Good evening. The song that I have done a history on this evening is in your church hymnal, number 367. Church hymnal, number 367. I'm going to read the song first here. Oh, for a closer walk with God. Oh, for a closer walk with God, a calm and heavenly frame, a light to shine upon the road that leads me to the Lamb. Where is the blessedness I knew when first I saw the Lord? Where is the soul-refreshing view of Jesus and His Word? The dearest idol I have known, whate'er that idol be, help me that idol to dethrone and worship only thee. So shall my walk be close with God, calm and serene my frame, so pure light shall mark the road that leads me to the Lamb. We're going to sing a couple songs this evening. They're about heaven. Um, and I was thinking about this song in relation to them, that, oh, for a closer walk with God. If we don't have that close walk with God, um, we will not be able to see heaven. And the other thing that led me to this song was uh, with the message this morning, with revival coming up, I pray that it's your prayer and it's my prayer that we will have a closer walk with God each and every day of our lives. Oh, for a closer walk with God. Soon after William Cowper was discharged from Cotton's mental asylum, he met Morley and Mary Unwin coming out of church. Morley, an, an, an evang evangelical clergyman, invited William to spend two weeks with them, and William ended up staying in the Unwin home for 22 years. He took up gardening as a hobby, which helped him ward off his depressions. When Morley was killed from, a fall, from falling off a horse, Mrs. Unwin, wanting to sit under the ministry of another evangelical preacher, decided to move to the village of Olney, population 2000, where John Newton was vicar. Newton, ex-scoundrel and slave trader, had become a celebrated preacher in England. William moved with her, and he and Newton were soon fast friends. They frequently met in the lawn between their houses, and William began assisting John in visiting the sick and dying and in distributing benevolent funds. In December 1769, Mary Unwin fell ill and appeared to be dying. William's anxiety and depression returned with a vengeance. Mary, being quite a bit older than William, was a mother figure to him. He prayed earnestly for her, and it was during this time that examining his own spiritual condition, he wrote, Oh, for a closer walk with God. He said, Mary is the chief of blessings I have met with in my journey since the Lord was pleased to call me. Her illness has been a sharp trial to me. Oh, that it might be, oh, that it might be a sanctified effect. I began to compose these verses yesterday morning before daybreak, but I fell asleep at the end of the first two lines. When I awakened, the third and fourth verses were whispered to my heart in a way I have often experienced. 
The hymn begins, Oh, for a closer walk with God, a calm and heavenly frame. Then goes on to ask, Where is the blessedness I knew when first I saw the Lord? Where is the soul refreshing view of Jesus and his word? Return, O holy dove, return, sweet messenger of rest. I hate the sins that made thee mourn and drove thee from my breast. The dearest idol I have known, whate'er that idol be, help me to tear it from thy throne and worship only thee. Fortunately, the danger passed and William's prayers were answered and Mary recovered. Chris is going to lead this song now. Church hymnal number 367. one we're going to sing is City of Light, which is a favorite of Grandpa Shirks, so we're going to sing that. I um, thought maybe we should, to fully honor Grandpa Shirk, we should have testimonies at the end of the service, and somebody needs to get up a couple times, but we'll see if we have time for that. And I trust 
Children can come up in these first two benches and throw on our room. We'll be back with you guys. And then I believe they're singing afterwards, so stick around up here.
um, John and Richard had talked, and he talked about um, the caring for one another, love one another. And that's kind of what got my thoughts going, was, you know, that's something we're supposed to do is care for one another, but we have such a great example in realizing God's care for us. And um, so tonight, I'm going to do a lesson from the hen house. Does anybody have chickens here? So you guys might be a little bit familiar with this. All right? Especially today, it's nice not having to buy all those eggs, isn't it? Well, you won't know about it, I know your mom and dad does. But there is some things that I've observed. You know, the Shirk family has had chickens for, when Kyle and Paul were over the needed jobs, so we got chickens. And they left, so it's my job now. But I don't mind it, I enjoy it. It's fun to watch them. Matter of fact, in the morning, the rooster crows that helps you get up, doesn't it? Well, sometimes you see it through it. You know, think of a rooster crowing, and the Bible talks about chickens too. Remember Peter when he denied Christ? After the rooster crowed three times, he realized that was a rooster crowing, and I denied Christ. And what did he do? He went there and did So they've had chickens for a very long time. And there are some neat things. Now, not everything a chicken does should you do. There's some things that chickens do that are not good. And some of those is, you know, pecking on other hens, that's not good. But there are some things that chickens do that, that kind of demonstrate, matter of fact, Jesus talked about it, to demonstrate God's care for us. And you can go to any farm store here this spring, and what do you see? Little peeps, some are yellow, some are different colors, but it's neat to watch it. They're so cute, little fluffy things that... You know, you've got this egg that has a yolk in it, and the white in the shell. How does that turn into a fluffy little shell? I don't know. But that's just God the Creator. But it's neat. And to see all them things scurrying around and watching them grow is amazing. Now, in a hen house, sometimes you have a hen that gets broody. You know what a broody hen is? She wants to sell some eggs. She wants to hatch out some chicks. And sometimes it has limited success. Because sometimes one of the eggs that a hen has been sitting on for a couple of weeks somehow makes it into the eggs. And mom will be very happy when that happens, and it's not very appetizing for breakfast either. Because it's kind of spoiled and ruined. But sometimes a hen is successful, and after a couple, three weeks, there's just little peeps running around the hen house. And that is so neat when that happens. And Gilly, brothers and sisters, the whole family wants to see these things. It's so cute. But what happens at night? You go in the hen house and you can't see them. Where are they at? Does anybody have an idea that these little chickens might be at? Under their mothers? Under their wings. And all of a sudden, the next morning you come out, and sometimes you don't see them. All of a sudden, you want to stick their head out and make the wing. Oh, there they are. And in uh, Psalm 91, it tells a little bit about God's care for us. And it talks a little bit about um, it talks about uh, Christ, God being a refuge, and how he delivers us. Uh, and verse 4 says, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. Does that sound like a safe place to you? Being under the wing of God, being safe and secure. And I just, uh, Christ also talked about, oh, if I could just. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, if I just gather thee, put thee like a hand does with chips. Um, it's a neat picture of how God cares for us. Now, there's another aspect that I've observed in care in a hen house. And, you know, the hen, the chickens have their order. The rooster is always, he's the rooster. Okay? Now, I've seen the rooster go out and find something neat. You think he gobbles it up? No, he makes it something. And he comes running. He gives it to her. He her. It's kind of interesting to watch that because he doesn't need it. He feeds the hens. Now, something, other, other thing I've noticed with roosters, they protect the hens. All right? Now, when a rooster makes a certain noise, I have learned to look up in the sky. There may be a hawk. 
it could just be an airplane or something, but they're not sure what it is, and he makes a certain noise, and sometimes the hens will run for cover, and he stands out there all by himself. I went on the front porch, I've oh, been a couple years ago, and we had chickens, back then I had chickens running around, and I heard a, a commotion, and I looked. There was a rooster out in the yard by himself, and the hens were gone. And all of a sudden, down swooped the hawk to get the rooster. And the rooster, there's a pine tree there, and the rooster ran down around the pine tree, and the hawk's trying to fly around to get him. But I seen that, I tied my hands, and the hawk flew away. But that rooster was watching out for hens. And he was willing to sacrifice. Didn't matter that hawk to get him. He'd rather have that hawk get him than get the hens. And sometime later, I saw it again, the same thing happened. And the hawk didn't get there. That's thought was so interesting how that rooster is watching out. And I think God watches out and cares for us that way too. So if you don't have chickens, maybe you talk to mom and dad and get something to watch. They're not that hard to feed or to take care of. So that's up to you to put your mom and dad. There's some neat lessons that we can learn. So yeah, I think at this time, you guys want to hear some singing? <laughs> I see the excitement. You just want to sing. These are going to be some interesting songs. I'm not going to leave them because we're going to have hands do that. Can we have the hands do that? All right. Start that end and you still be still. So if I'm a song and you don't train, that goes to heaven. 
Dad and ladies for doing that. Just a warning, it might be easier for some to convince their parents to get chickens than others. <laughs> um, James has Bible trivia. Mm -hmm. Just a few things here to get your minds working here. Um, I'm going to read a verse, and I'd like for you to give me the reference on this first one. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Where is that found? Okay. Very good. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 and 18. I'll give uh, the reference, see if anybody can tell me what verse is found there. Mark 11, verse 24. Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Next one, I'll read the verse. You tell me where it's found. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Where's that found? Give you a hint. It's in Proverbs. Chapter 16, verse 3. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Uh, the next one, I'll give the reference, and you can tell me the verse. Uh, 2 Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 7. Very good. We walk by faith, not by sight. Next one's a little bit tougher here. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Where is that found? Yes. Know what verses? 
very good. You narrowed it down considerably. Verses 7 and 8. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Psalms 121, verses 7 and 8. Um, tell me where this can be found. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Close. 11 1. Very good. Okay. Tell me where this is found. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Very good. Uh, just a couple of Bible trivia questions here. Uh, in the book of Genesis, Jacob wrestles with a man all night and is given a name. What is that name? Very good. That's Genesis uh, chapter 32, verses 24 through 30, should you want to look at that later. Um, which two animals did Noah find it difficult to trust on the ark? The two she is. All right, um, this is for the children. Which disciple was known as doubting? Can one of the children tell me who that was? Thomas, Thomas very good. Okay. Um, another one for the kids. Who wore clothing made of camel's hair? Very good. Okay. The last one. Um, what kind of a man was Boaz before he was married? Ruthless. Very good. He was ruthless. <laughs> okay. Thank you, James, for that trivia. Um, we do have time, so... I guess in honor of Grandpa's shirt. Does anybody have a testimony? Anybody have anything they'd like to share? <clears throat> we won't make you say it. Say something twice. <clears throat> All right, if not, are there any announcements this evening? Ministers love offering, the ushers can prepare to serve that. Any other announcements? <clears throat> Okay, that's all we have this evening. Uh, let's stand for prayer. Brandon, will you lead us in prayer?